Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to quickly showcase how we can call an API using a Git call using something called a web client with Spring Boot in Java. So I'll just start with a very clean slate. So I'll create a new project. I'm going to be creating a Spring initialized project. I will do Git API. Very creative. I would then very simply just add nothing, and then we're going to add a dependency later on. So just a clean Spring project. And here we go. Now we have a basic Spring project. We have a very basic structure with a main class where we'll start a Spring Boot application. But let's quickly have a look at how we need to actually add this web client. So we need to go into our PromXML and we then need to add a dependency. And I will simply just leave this dependency in description. But we simply just add this dependency, which allows us to do some Spring Boot startup web flux which is more or less the things we need to call these APIs. I would then load my Maven to make sure everything's up to date. Let's then have a look at the API I'm going to be calling in this setup. So I found a public and free API online, which is very simple, just a catfact API, where we simply just call HTTPS catfact.ninja slash fact, and then we input an argument in this case saying that the max length of our fact should be 140 characters. And we now just get some random cat facts. So a very, very simple JSON response. I would then take my web client, which is going to be creating shortly, pass this URL. So let's copy this URL. And in here, inside our main method for our Spring Boot application, I would simply first just create a string URL just to contain my path to my API call. I would then create a builder from the Spring Framework Web Reactive, so everything we just implemented, more or less. And often, I see some people actually doing it like this because it's a part of the web client. So we do it like this, and we just do web client dot builder. And of course, we need to give it a name, so I will just call it builder in this case. So we have a web client builder type builder and then we access it through the static web plan call to get a builder. We would now simply like our response from our UL. First of all, let's just do it as a string. We do cat fact equal to our builder dot build dot get. And notice here we're doing it like calls upon calls. So we're starting creating our builder, we then build it. We then call a get method. We could also have done a, a post, but in this case, just a simple API call, we're just gonna do get. I would then do URI to pass my URL. So now we have our builder, we build it, we do a get call, we specify our URL. We would then like to retrieve our data and we then need to define a body to mono which simply defines which type of data are we going to be retrieving. And in this first simple setup, I would just simply do a string dot class. And now we're returning what's a mono, which is kind of like an object in Spring that can either hold a single element or none elements. So it's kind of like, it's not a string, kind of like a box containing a string for now. So to actually get the element inside this box to get our data, we could just simply call it dot block. So this, depending on what you want to do, you could also, instead of having a string here, you could have a mono containing a string and later on retrieve it with block. But now I'm just going to be retrieving it here. So let me just make it a bit more pretty and then actually showcase it works. And then we're going to go through line by line again to sum up what everything is doing. But I would just very simply just print my cat fact. And just to make everything a bit cleaner, because I know that Spring is going to be printing quite a lot of stuff, I would put it inside, I don't know, kind of like a highlighted area. And now let's actually try calling this to see it works. And if we give it a few seconds, we should see that we get a fact containing, in this case, the strongest climber among the big cats. A leopard can carry pray twice its weight of a tree and with the length of our fact. So one thing we could do to improve this 
is that instead of returning it as a string, we might have a more complex structure where we were returning as a list of something. In this case, we're just getting one element, so it's very simple. But in the of returning to mono, we were returning to flux because mono is a single or no object, or and flux is no object or a list of objects. So mono for single returns or flux for multiple returns. But let's actually improve this. So instead of returning a string, I would create a new Java class. Let's call it cut fact. And we now know our cut fact needs to contain a few variables. So we do string fact and int length. I then need a basic constructor. And actually note we need, because of the way it's set up, we need an empty constructor. And then we then need our getters and setters. Because what Spring's gonna be doing is it's first gonna create an empty cat object then set our fact from our JSON and then set our length from our JSON. So we can now, instead of having this be a string, we can now do cat fact. And then again, but this mono is no longer gonna be a string, it's gonna be a cat fact. And actually to make this printable, let's add a two string as well. Otherwise, we're just gonna get the position of our object in memory, which is a bit boring. So let's add that to string like that. So now we should be able to actually get the exact same output. If we just run it and give it a few seconds. So now here again, we've got a cat fact now because it's actually an object containing our, our fact and our link. And of course, it's just based on our two string method. But as you can see, it works in the way that if we go through it, whenever we call our cat fact, we have our builder from our web client builds, so kind of starts. We know it's a get method. We then have our URL. We then know we're retrieving some data. We then define in this case that we're either going to get no data or one specific data point of the type cat fact. And instead of just returning this box containing either data or no data, we're going to block it. So we're actually going to get it. And we then just very simply print it to the console. So this is a very simple example of what we can do using a web client to retrieve data from an API endpoint. But of course, it can get very complex and we can do a bunch of more stuff. In this case, just simple get. We can also do post where we post or where we retrieve some stuff. We can set headers, we can set body elements. We're doing posts and we can do a bunch of other stuff. But I think this is a pretty decent way of getting a basic understanding of how our web client works in Spring Boot. So if you enjoyed this quick showcase of the web client setup where we've retrieved some cat facts, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.